Hi guys, Falmoff here. I don't know if you were aware, but there's been an ongoing digital edition tournament hosted by the Scythe Discord. It recently just concluded, and I had the chance and the opportunity to play in the final table. And I've been asked if I would go back and revisit the video on demand of the game and provide some commentary as a background just to what was going on, what I was thinking, and my thoughts on the game now that it's over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the game up on the screen for you and we're just going to talk about it. I have it at two times speed so we should be able to get it through in a reasonable amount of time and we're going to just start with the bidding process and go from there. For those of you who don't know how bidding works, on the left of your screen you see an app. It's a web app that was created by Smug Skull and it generates four random faction Mac combinations. Tagawa Patriotic, Saxony Agricultural, Crimea Industrial, and Nordic Militant are the combinations that were generated for the final game. The players bid on these combinations by pledging coins that will be subtracted from their in-game score. Whoever pledges the most coins for a particular combination gets to play with that combination. For example, if you bid 10 coins on Crimea and no one is willing to go higher, well then you get to play as Crimea, but to win the game, you have to win by at least 10, assuming the other faction mat combinations all go for zero. Clear as mud? Yeah, I think you got it. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the video, we're going to see the bidding, and then we are going to go from there. Alright, the first thing that we're thinking about now that we see the faction map combinations is that Crimea Industrial is the strongest combination on the board. We pull up our tier list here and we see that Crimea Industrial is an A, Tagawa Patriotic is a C, Nordic Militant is a C, and Saxony Agricultural is a D. Now let's get back to the bidding. We see we're not very far in and I've already bid Crimea Industrial up to 12, with Derp jumping over to Nordic Militant. Derp lately has not loved playing the OP factions. He would much rather get a lesser faction for a cheaper price. Beast for Crows also isn't ready to pay 13 over Nordic Militant to get that Crimea Industrial. One of the things that's going through my mind is that Feast for Crows actually beat me in the preliminary rounds with Crimea Industrial. I, I bid too high on Rusty at Patriotic and he was able to end the game in about 15 turns easily covering his bid. So I'm reticent in this game to let him have Crimea Industrial too cheaply. On the other hand, uh, Derp there up at the top cleared one of his, I believe his semi-final game with Tagawa Innovative and managed to win in about 15 or 16 turns, having gotten the combination for a pretty cheap price. So it's a little scary to have Derp on Tagawa it's a little terrifying to have Feast for Crows on Crimea, but Joy Division's coming in here for Crimea now, and $13 is a bid he can definitely cover. I've seen him do it with Crimea, especially once he gets to Crimea into that tier two. So I come back with about $14. But I'm starting to feel like Crimea Industrial is getting a little bit on the expensive side. Crimea Industrial is a rush combination. It's very good at ending the game quickly. You can win as fast as 14 turns. But it usually finds itself in Tier 1, and it's hard to get out of the 50 to 60 coin range. So with Feast for the Crows bidding it up now to 15 and Joy $3 on Nordic Militant, that Crimea Industrial is starting to look a little expensive compared to Tagawa Patriotic and presumably Saxony Agriculture, which is, at this point is guaranteed to go for zero coins. Because we bid until every faction has a bid. So the moment someone picks Saxony Agricultural, the bidding's over. Even in two times speed, you can tell I'm taking a little bit of time at this point because I'm starting to think that I'd like to see Nordic Militant 
but I'm not quite ready to have Feast for Crows get Crimea Industrial for 15. If memory serves in here in a minute, I'm going to go for 16 on Crimea Industrial. Meanwhile, Derp has been sitting on Tagawa Patriotic for a significant amount of time on that zero bid. Tagawa Patriotic is, has a nice coin engine, and it's a great combination if you're looking to stall Crimea Industrial, because if you get enough coin quick enough, you can put Crimea in a position where, sure, they can end the game, sure, they can have the most points, but they can't cover their bid. Once you subtract 15 points from their final score, they're just not looking at a game that they can win. So Tagawa Patriotic is great for stalling the game, but it's hard to get six stars in a reasonable amount of time with it. That $16 bid on Crimea Industrial, I did it, but I didn't feel comfortable about it. I felt good about $16 or Crimea Industrial, Winning by 10 over Nordic Militant. I didn't love Crimea Industrial winning by 16 over Tagawa Patriotic. So I feel like 16's kind of on the edge for me right here. I'm not going higher than this. And I'm not going to be completely disappointed if someone bumps me off at this point, to be completely honest. Joy bids up Nordic Militant to 7. Closing that gap between Crimea Industrial and Nordic Militant slightly. And that was the challenge with this bidding session was that no one wanted Crimea Industrial too high. No one really wanted to play Tagawa Patriotic except for Derp. And no one really wanted to play Saxony Agricultural. So we see Nordic Militant that's in the same tier as Tagawa Patriotic right now seven coins ahead of it. That's a pretty significant difference for two mid-tier combos that are, well, in the same tier. So Feast for Crows has a decision to make. Where is he going to go with this? And he's, he's certainly good at it and likes Crimea. I've seen him play it very well and very efficiently. But he's evidently a little bit uncomfortable with that high bid at this point. I think he's eyeing the difference between Crimea Industrial and Nordic Militant at 9 there and thinking that's a pretty significant difference. So he's going to go with Nordic Militant at $8. So it's back to Joy. Joy has a choice. He can end the bidding by pulling the trigger on Saxony Agricultural or he can come back and bid on one of these other three. He takes Crimea Industrial back from Feast for Crows at 17. And at this point, I've already made up my mind. I'll put a one coin bid on Tagawa Patriotic. I don't like Tagawa. Tagawa is not my strength in this game. Derp is probably a better Tagawa player than I am. But that makes me scared to give it to him this cheaply. But Derp comes right back with a $2 bid. He wants Tagawa. And honestly, I'm just not brave enough to take it up to three. So I don't want Crimea at 18. I don't really want Tagawa at three. And I don't want Saxony Agricultural only $2 cheaper than Tagawa because even though Saxony Agricultural has the potential to be faster and get more spread over the board, it has a much inferior coin engine to Tagawa Patriotic. So I don't really like any of my options. About at this point, it occurs to me that the top three factions in this list are all clustered together down at the bottom of the board, and they're going to be stepping on each other. Whereas Nordic Militant is all by itself at the top of the board and is going to have the opportunity to spread a lot unimpeded by the other factions. So I jump on it with a nine coin bid. One of the things that's interesting about the militant board, you see it on the right of your screen, is that move is over deploy. That means while I'm still making my mechs, I'm gonna get the opportunity to expand into territory that is largely unchallenged by the rest of the factions. So now what you see in front of you is just the uh, the commentators killing a little bit of time 
while they wait for the game to load so they can go in and spectate the game. But if you were reading chat about this time, you know there were at least a, lot, a few people who questioned bidding 9 on Nordic Militant. And honestly, it was a little bit scary because Nordic Militant can start slowly, move is over deploy, which makes it a little bit awkward. You have to move to get on metal, so there's an initial move at the beginning where you're just guaranteed to not have a bottom row action. But one thing it does have going for it in a bid game like this is that it can make a lot of coin, and coin engines become extremely powerful when you have a bid game. And it's much easier to play a stall game against a rush combination like Crimea Industrial than it normally would be. So, what's my job in this game? My job in this game is to start my engine up and move through that engine quick enough that I start to spread before, no, before Crimea Industrial can end the game. If Saxony Agricultural rushes the game and ends in 14 turns, it's a similar thing. I want to stall this game because my target um, end is about 16 to 18 rounds with this combination. So now that the game's booted up and, and we're looking on the screen, we, uh, we start with Crimea. And the, the standard strategies for Crimea Industrial are pretty set. You either trade two metal or produce at the beginning most of the time. And Crimea produces. Saxony is going to take a little while on this initial turn, and there's a reason for that that we find out later. And that's that one of Saxony's objectives is balanced workforce, as he told us after the game. Well, it looks like since, uh, since Ghost Wheel here is an affiliate, we're going to get a little ad break. And that's going to happen probably three or four times in this video. There's just, not, um, there's just not much I can do about that. Um, <laughs> but uh, let's see here. Yeah, I can, I can turn it off. So where were we? Saxony Agri cultural he's having to make a decision about whether he goes for balanced workforce if he goes for balanced workforce he's looking at more of an economy game maybe stretch this game out farther get his enlists and try to get a lot of coin while he's going for his stars he trades for oil i trade for food what i'm planning on doing is trading for food moving on to my metal and my village which is going to set me up to produce, trade a food and, and a metal into an enlist, and then produce again, and that will get me to five workers and enough metal for my first max. So here's the move to the mountain and the village. In the meantime, Tagawa down here at the bottom right is already setting himself up for his first, his first upgrade. For me, is now at five workers, and I believe working on his second enlist now. Like I said, for me, industrial has a fairly standard opening. Uh, Saxony produces two oil because, I mean, if you're going to upgrade that move action, why not go ahead and produce the oil instead of trading for it? Tagawa produces produces to get one oil. Crimea trades for the metal that they're going to need to build their speed mac. And we're back to Saxony, who, after a moment of thinking about it, is going to move a worker to the village, to the mountain, the character to the encounter, and upgrade the deploy. So that only costs him two metal, and that two metal deploy is right underneath trade, allowing him to functionally trade outright for his mechs. Encounter number nine. I have it on good authority. This is Joy Division, who's playing Saxony's least favorite encounter and there's some good reason for that he takes the oil and the popularity because well at least he's going to get an upgrade out of this and it's not as bad as it could be because he doesn't really need metal because of the upgrades that he's going to get but i think he would have liked to see some food on that he declines going for the structure, which I was glad of because it would have allowed him to reach me and move into my territory with only his river walk and speed mech. 
uh, if he had taken that mine, but he didn't. So that buys me a little bit of time. Tagawa trades for some food to set up his first in list. Um, Crimea produces into his speed mech. We're back to Saxony. Uh, we didn't get to see my move there, but what I did essentially was I traded for two metal. So now I have three metal, or I produced, went to five workers, and now I have three metal on the ground. Two from productions and one from the trade where I got a food and a metal. So now we're to Crimea, and he gets an encounter that he's not happy about. And he spends a lot of time thinking about this encounter. He could have gone for the $3 for one upgrade, and in a straight-up game, you probably do. Uh, the encounter is going to jump uh, back and forth a little bit. That's kind of the price of speeding up the tape. But the $3 for one upgrade is, well, it's, it's kind of rough if you're trying to make an 18 coin bid sure it speeds up your game a little bit but it also costs you coin he could have gone with the pay two popularity to gain through three food oil and one food but then being able to produce gets dicey he'd have to turn around and immediately trade two food to enlist he'd get two popularity for doing that but then he wouldn't have enough popularity for his remaining producers without doing something else. So he just takes the $2 of one popularity. Probably the right choice there. So what we see out of Saxony now is his first mech deploy. We're back to us where we tr uh, produced or traded for metal the last turn. So now we're just going to gain a coin and deploy a mech. I gained a coin because that speed mech is going to allow me to move all the way to the encounter with one move. So there's no sense using a turn to move halfway there. But since I have to move to deploy my mech, I might as well just take an extra coin doing it. Tagawa here takes this third encounter option, pay two pop to gain one upgrade and any two resources. He takes the upgrade on the deploy and very cleverly takes an oil and a metal instead of just going for two metal because that allows him with the next production to get well and enlist off of that farm, but also get enough oil for yet another upgrade. Tagawa is starting to show his hand that he's going to go for the upgrade star. Saxony getting a production, going to five workers, setting himself up to have two metal now, which is going to allow him to trade for something else while he gets the mech, since he already has the metal. I produce, again, going to eight workers. I have a game plan here. I want to go to eight workers. I want to move my eight workers over to the farm and metal that's in Albion's territory. And I'd like to just produce one more time, but I know I'm going to be two resources short. Specifically, I'm going to be two foods short. So later on, I'm going to have to do one more production and really just get two food out of that production. It's expensive, it's unfortunate, but I haven't figured out a way to get all my resources out of this one production in this sequence without having to do an extra trade or an extra produce action. So you see I traded for two metal. And we're back to Tagawa who after a production last turn moves again and sets up a uh, another upgrade. So now it's Crimea's turn. And I believe this is when Crimea starts to make the game a little bit interesting because he's sitting on a Riverwalk mech and it's speed mech and Tagawa just moved into his territory and brought the metal with him. He couldn't leave the metal behind because he doesn't control the territory that that trap token is in. But I think he's going to re regret that move and in fact I think he he even said in real time that he was so focused on Saxony, he forgot about Crimea and that Crimea could attack him in that position. Crimea loses two combat cards to that trap token, which hurts badly, leaving himself only two remaining. But one of those happens to be a five. He plays one power in the five and beats Tagawa at um, five power. And then look here, Crimea gets bailed out by the encounter, paying $2 for two power and two combat cards. 
Um, that was a good sequence for Crimea. They're sitting on a worker star in a combat car. They already have, or I'm sorry, a combat star. They already have two of their mechs. They already have, I believe, two of their enlists. They're starting to look like they're gaining some serious momentum already spread out now to five territories. We check the score review here. Interestingly, they're only five coins ahead of Tagawa, despite Tagawa being knocked back to base, having no resources, and controlling functionally only four territories from a score perspective. Why is that? Rame is sitting on five coins, as you see at the top. Tagawa has 13. So now we're waiting for Crimea to pick a building. They just picked the armory. We're starting to think Crimea has a reason to want power. They have seven. They have far more than anybody else. But they're still interested in getting more. The power star is not really in reach. So it's not clear why they're prioritizing the armory. Some people in chat suggested it would even have been better to go with a mill. But I think the armory was the right call in Crimea's situation, as we'll see in a few minutes. Let's see, Crimea's still just wrapping up their turn here. So now it's, it's about to go to Saxony. Saxony has their speed mech, they have their underpass mech, they're set up to do another upgrade. And at this point, I know what Saxony's thinking. They're thinking Crimea is going to end this game too quickly if they can secure the middle of the board. Why? Crimea needs the factory. Crimea needs spread in order to cover their bids. So what's Saxony going to do? Saxony is going to do something that helps them, but really helps me and Tagawa as well. And that is try to shut off Crimea's access to the center of the board. Really smart tactical play by Saxony here. Bring three workers up to this village tunnel and then start to move other units into where they can reach the factory. So you will see, I uh, believe that mech on the mountain is going to move to the, the mountain adjacent to the factory. And yes, the character is going to follow. All right, we've got another ad here. So what we, what we know so far is that Crimea is moving quickly. We haven't seen an objective yet. And my engine, I know it's solid. I know that it will kick into gear once it gets rolling. But right now it's moving slowly. And if you notice, the camera's not spent a lot of time in my direction. The reasons for that are a few. One, my uh, my play to this point has not been particularly flashy. My, and I'm all by myself on that side of the board and there's just not much happening up there. So I'm kind of coasting under the radar here and I like that. That's fine with me. So now here's where I move my workers out. I'm going to put two on the farm. I'm going to put five on the mountain. We went through it pretty... Oh, here's my encounter. I know I'm two resources short as we said before. And those are the two resources. I just got them off that encounter. So for those of you keeping score at home, I'm deploying my second mech and I have two enlists, which means I need two more food and I need um, No, that's that's not right. Oh well. The way it works out is oh I have I have one enlist. So what I'm going to do next turn is I'm going to trade one medal and one food, get my second enlist, and I'll still have a medal. Then I'll produce five more medal, giving me six medal, which is enough for both of my remaining mechs, and I'll produce two food, which since my trade action is over enlist, is enough for my remaining two enlists. So that encounter saves me basically an entire turn because I don't have to spend a turn getting the two extra food that I don't have. And that's, and that I can't produce on this next production turn. So this next turn, I have a choice. I could go ahead and produce, or what I could do is I could go ahead and trade for that metal and that food and do that enlistment. I elect to go with the metal and the food and to do the enlistment 
in retrospect i'm not sure that was the right choice it was definitely the more economically pure choice since i had one enlist and two mechs and i wanted to catch my enlist up to my mech but i took a gamble doing that as we'll see in just a minute I thought about this for a minute, which deploy I wanted, or which enlist I wanted to get. I went for the deploy enlist first. That was the right call. Saxony made four mechs in this game. I made four mechs in this game. I had two mechs out before my next, um, before the enlist I did just then. So going with that deploy enlist gave me an extra four coins that I wouldn't have gotten had I gone for it second. So that was the, definitely the right call. So here Tagawa's gotten two workers on every territory they have, but Crimea's shaking things up and about to make life very difficult for Saxony. Saxony would have liked it if Crimea had cared a little bit about popularity. Well, they didn't. And not only did they not care about popularity, they actually wanted to send workers back. And we see Crimea spending two four cards and one power, leaving themselves with seven power and sending workers home so they get their objectives send one back and oh my gosh guys it's round 11 and Crimea has 11 stars but wait Tagawa's sitting on 18 coin which means Crimea's just up by eight coin Crimea has to clear 16 over Tagawa that's eight more well two stars is six more Oh gosh, the factory is six more. They could do this. So Saxony has to do something about it and has to do something about it quickly. They bump a Crimea worker. Who cares that that mech is by itself? Crimea has their combat stars. They take the factory. They're not holding it very strongly, but by this time they have enlisted and they do have six power. So they're not a pushover either. Tagawa now sitting six coins away from Mia needing to close a 10 coin gap. Crimea can't move next turn, can't come in on the factory there, um, but they are only a few turns away from ending. They just need two more enlists and one mech, potentially being able to end in turn 14. Uh, I produced this turn. I thought about it. Because I'm scared to death right now, Saxony has a factory card, and from that Tundra Tunnel, they can hit me with one unit. Now, they have a power advantage over me. My cards are not great. If they decide to come after me, and they win the battle either by bluffing me, or I try to call a bluff and spend too much power and they still win, I'm dead in the water. My game is over. So I'm sweating right now. I know Crimea is trading for the two metal. Um, they're getting their, their, their third enlist, setting themselves up to do uh, either a produce into a deploy or just a deploy without a produce. And Saxony produces, getting their worker star. I'm breathing a sigh of relief. Enough of this. I'm moving to the water. I don't want to give anybody a chance to take resources away from me. I'm the only faction that can get it on the water. This is my moment. I'm going to start spreading out, getting my coins, working on my stars. This is the point of the game where I wanted to get to because I knew that this is the point of the game where it was going to accelerate for me. But I need a little help because Crimea's already gotten their combats and they're already in good, good shape. And Tagawa's giving me that help. I have to beat Tagawa by seven coins eventually. But Crimea has to beat Tagawa by seven more coins than he has to beat me. So, Tagawa is the one that really is in a position to stall this game more effectively than even I can. And that's what he's doing with this huge bag of 26 coins. So Crimea, let's see, drops his fourth mech. He's literally one turn away from ending it. But he's only three coins ahead of me, and he's tied with Tagawa. He can't end it and win this game. He has to come up with 16 more coin, and where is it going to come from? Saxony's blocking him from the factory. He's not going to let him take it. 
He knows that if Crimea can't reach the factory, Crimea can't end and win this game. Saxony, interestingly, finding himself in a stall position. But Crimea go ahead, goes ahead and, well, he went to five stars this past term. So now we're to, back to Tagawa. Tagawa is sitting on all but one of their upgrades, and they have two oil. They deployed, I believe that's their, their uh, Shinobi mech. And now they're going to start to shake things up and attack Crimea. Why not? Crimea has, uh, has eight power, Tagawa has three, but Crimea has no incentive to win a battle from a star perspective. But it turns out Crimea doesn't want to give up the territory, as Tagawa is about to find out. As Crimea throws the book, Tagawa goes with nine, Crimea spends all but three power, sending Tagawa home. At this point in the game, some people in chat were down on Tagawa's chances. I think the, the words Rip Tagawa even came out. But Tagawa's night is not far from over, and give him a credit for that. He's up by three, even without the bids. With the bids, he's up over me by ten. And that's holding four territories and only having a five-point advantage over me. Those three stars really giving him a lot of points right now. So Crimea is going to start to spread. That spread I'll be grateful for later. And uh, the turn goes to Saxony. Crimea at this point is not optimistic on his chances. He's technically in the lead in a straight up game, but he's not close to making his bid and it's not looking good. So now it's back to me. I moved last turn and deployed. I'm sorry, I traded and enlisted last turn. So I'm going to move. I'm going to, my objective is harvest advantage. And I moved last turn in such a way that I could set myself up to grab that farm in Polania's base and hop a worker over to one of Rusfiat's farms there to combine with Al the Albion farm to get my objective. So that's a two-star turn for me as I, uh, as I placed my last mech on the uh, on the two workers there because not only can I hit Crimea now with Riverwalk, Crimea with their Riverwalk can hit me. So I don't want to take any chance of losing that one food because that's going to be my ticket next turn to enlisting. Sorry, the camera's moving on a little fast right now. That's what you get when you speed up the frames. So now we're back to Saxony. At this point, I'm in the lead. I'm in the lead by six coins over Crimea, and I'm virtually tied with Tagawa with the bid, since my lead over them is now seven. The people in chat who are pretty down on my bid are starting to think I've got a shot here. And this game is materializing the way that I hoped it would. What's happened so far? Well, one big thing that happened was Crimea boxed in Tagawa. Tagawa made so much coin in this game, if they'd been allowed to blaze a path to the factory, they would have just run away with the game. Uh, credit that to an excellent Tagawa player being at the helm. The other thing that happened is that when Crimea surged, a very good Saxony player realized that would likely happen and secured the middle of the board. Sometimes playing a game, good players are your best friend because they can keep other players in check in ways that you're not positioned to. I was kind of an isolationist in this game, not so much by choice, but by board position. I thought that isolated board position would give me an advantage, and so far it's turning out that way. My advantage actually right now has swelled to 10 coins off of the coins I got from the objective. I didn't see this move coming, guys. This was almost the game. Tagawa double attacks Crimea, sitting on the same amount of power as them, and six combat cards. He has diversify production, the objective. He has workers on every space except for wood, and he's about to take a wood space and put a worker there. If he wins on this village tunnel and wins on this wood space, 
that's two combats and his objective that's tagawa patriotic in 15 turns i i just don't even i just don't even know the very good player who played a very good game so they're they're giving it some thought here and i've already sort of given it away to you if you haven't seen it already that Crimea wins his first battle. Two power. That was two power that if Tagawa had spent extra, he will probably would have won this game. He does throw enough to secure the second fight. So he does get one combat star. And he does get his objective right here. So he's sitting on five stars. But now it's two more turns before he can move and try to get a combat. And he's sitting on zero power and three cards. So now we're to Crimea, and I have to say, the game's out of reach for Crimea. Crimea knows it. Everybody knows it. He got shut down from the middle of the board by, uh, by Saxony. He's gotten sent home now by Tagawa on that wood space. He just can't make his bid anymore. But I have to hand it to him. He was an incredibly classy act. He played the rest of the game to try not to king make. He didn't want to make, he didn't want to just end the game and make somebody the champion just because they had to be up. He played in such a way that forced the rest of us to try to earn the finish. And he deserves a lot of credit. That was a really classy move on his part. So right now what he's thinking about is how exactly do I do that? How do I spread out? How do I take territory? How do I do my best to still try to win without ending the game because I can't end and win the game? And what we'll see here in just a second is that he wayfares to Rusfiat's village and then moves one of the workers one space to Rusfiat's tundra just because there's not a better way that he can pick up more territory. And we're back to me. Oh, after Saxony. So this is round 16. Crimea has two power. I need two combats. I have five power and I have artillery. I'm holding my breath right here because if the board looks like it does right now when it's my turn, it's good game. I can move two units and I can attack that village tunnel and I can attack that wood space on the left side of the board and I can win this game, but Saxony is an excellent player and knows that, and he's not gonna let me in the game. He's going to bump Crimea off this space by spending just enough to win and leaving him himself enough that I can't win against him one-on-one. -on -one. He's also gonna turn in an objective and get to four stars, putting him only four behind me after the bids. So now I spend a good bit amount of time examining the board and trying to figure out if there is a way I can get two combats, and I just don't see it. I've got the easy one on the wood space with Crimea at the bottom left of the board, but I can't reach Crimea on the rest of his village. I can't reach Tagawa anywhere, and I could beat Saxony in a head-to-head -head fight if not for Disarm. Both of Saxony's single mechs that I can reach are on tunnels, and he has disarm. And even though I can artillery him, I go into the fight with less power than him. Turns out, in retrospect, Saxony had really bad combat cards, and I probably could have ended the game right here. But I couldn't take that risk. I couldn't take the risk that with six combat cards, Saxony didn't have at least a four or a five, which I believe is all he would have needed to uh, keep me from winning the game. And then if I get within one combat star and I'm down to zero power, I'm dead in the water. So I have to do something, it's time to move. I briefly consider sending a, a mech to the factory, not to win, but just to artillery Saxony, take away some of his power and, uh, and force him to throw some cards and some power. But I decide that if I weaken Saxony too much, that might give Tagawa an opportunity 
to attack Saxony and get that last combat star. In retrospect, it might have made sense to do it anyway because of what Saxony does next, but I felt good about my position, and at this point, I was playing to spread out a little bit, grab some more territory, grab a star, put the game a little farther ahead of Tagawa. Right now, I'm only ahead of Tagawa by five coins, taking this territory and get another star is going to make that about 10 coins and keep Tagawa from ending the game. Even though Tagawa really can't end the game this turn, I want to maintain as much of a buffer on Tagawa as possible right now. One thing that I will say is that I underestimated Saxony's position at this point of the game. Saxony, over these next two turns, had an opportunity where if he could have pulled off an objective and a star and taken enough territory from me, he would have been within striking distance. It would have been difficult because he's down by 22, but with the bid, that's just 13. So 13 is attainable, especially when you get 6 from two stars, that leaves you with 7. Well, how do you get 7 points? Well, you could pick up two territories and take two territories away from somebody at the same time. That would be eight points. So if Saxony can attack me twice, he can, he can win. So I'll take back what I said. If I had moved one of that mech or the character off that mountain spot, he could have moved from the village tunnel to attack me on the mountain and he could have moved the tundra mech from that tundra spot to his home mountain using underpass and then river walked to my other mech on the wood space he loses the territory moving off the village tunnel so maybe it's not quite enough it would have been really close and in fact he said after the game that the reason that this turn took him as long as it did is he was thinking through his options and he eventually got to the point where he realized he could end it, the game would be over, and he, but he'd still be down by one coin. That's how close this game was that in turn 17, Saxony was one coin away. In turn 15, the Gawa was too power away. So we almost see the end of this game in turn 15, and then we almost see the end of this game in turn 17. So I'm thinking about what I'm going to do after Saxony takes his turn, because I can't move. If I can move, I can end the game. I can double attack Saxony on that village tunnel, no problem. But I can't. So what am I going to do? I can trade for two metal. I consider that because next time I move, I could just go ahead and use the bottom row action and get four coins. But I'm planning on getting a combat the next time I move. And if I get a combat and it's my sixth star, I don't get to use my bottom row action. So the trade's a waste of a coin. I mean, the two resources are worth a coin, so it's a wash. But you'd always rather have a coin than two resources if you're at tier one popularity. The uh, the other thing I'm considering is just taking a dead turn, picking a bottom row action that I don't have the resources for, and just hitting confirm. That lets me essentially move my marker to another spot, get in a place where I can come back and move the next turn, and I'm in good shape. The other option is to trade for a popularity and go for five to six. And that's what I end up deciding to do because I thought it was possible that if this game stalled farther or further along that it could get back to me in round 19. And if I were to trade for popularity again in round 19, my lead would just be insurmountable at that point. And it would just be a matter of time. So Saxony still mathing out his turns. I've decided at this point that I'm probably going to trade the popularity and I'm just waiting with bated breath to see what Saxony is going to do.
Well, he's still thinking. So that's the math. I'm up 13 on Tagawa right now. I only need to beat Tagawa by 7. I'm feeling pretty good about my position. The turn just has to get back around to me. But that's the story of Scythe, though. Every game you lost, you say, I just needed one more turn. I just need one more turn. Saxony moves to the wood tunnel, bumps one of my workers, thinking, come on. And then here he comes with the second one. Guess we'll move in the map around a little bit. Because that's the thing. Tagawa only has a few territories, which is where my advantage is. But to, more of Tagawa's points are wrapped up in coins and stars. So it doesn't hurt. It, there's a lot of area to hurt me. And that's what Saxony's starting to do, is to bump my workers. But my lead is still 9 right now. I'm still over Tagawa two, by 2 once you subtract the bids. And Tagawa's really kicking himself right now for not having at least one medal. Because he's got nothing to do this turn but bolster after I take this popularity. Maybe I hadn't decided completely to take the pop before it was my turn, but I pretty much had. So Tagawa's got nothing to do but bolster after I take this popularity. And it would have been three extra coin for them if they'd had a, at least one medal, which would have been huge in this game. I'm sorry, the bolster was last turn. This is a move, and Tagawa makes what I think is a mistake here. They move their character off of the wood space instead of moving one of the mountain workers to the village. This didn't pr prove to be a decisive error, and I may be wrong. He may have had a plan here if the game went longer, but that trap gets trumped by that armory. And that allowed me to stay, well, now four coins ahead, but behind Tagawa in the uh, after bids. Kermia helps out, bumps one of my workers, trying to stall the game a little bit. Tagawa goes to one popularity. And now it's Saxony's turn. Saxony has two units on the factory. They attack Tagawa. I'm holding my breath. I need Saxony to win this and not have another objective. I didn't know this. I didn't realize this. But if Saxony wins this fight and turns in the objective, that's GG, and they go home as the winner. But Saxony knows they can't get the objective because their objective is balanced workforce. Sagawa has bad cards. And what we see here in a minute is exactly what I need to happen. And that's a Saxony victory, throwing only five, and a Tagawa loss. So now every single player is sitting on five stars, and this is my chance. I, uh, I, I, my hands aren't shaking, but they certainly could have been. I'm sitting at four coins above Tagawa. I need to be seven above Tagawa. I would win on the unit's tiebreaker. If I move into the factory, I lose one territory. I pick up two. That's four plus the star is seven. That's enough. I use artillery on Saxony. He drops down to two power. I have a five and a four. I know I can go to 13. I only need 12. That's star number six. GG. Guys, it was an honor. To play with these players they're some of the best players in this game that i know it was uh it was definitely humbling to win this game and i had a whole lot of fun playing in it so i want to thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and uh, please give it a like and if you want to watch some more uh, scythe on twitch 
Follow me on my Twitch channel and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks so much. Catch you later. Bye.